back here on the John Forcade Show and one of our John Forcade specials this week, Friends and Neighbors Black Friday pricing event. $750 on Black Friday bonus cash now available on both the Fusion and Focus. Again, $750 on Black Friday bonus cash now available on both the Focus and Ford Fusion right here at Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Forcade Show. Mike, to tell you, along with John Forcade and John, the $10,000 elephant in the room, so to speak, everywhere you go, I mean, everyone talks about it, newspaper, radio, television, everybody. It's, it's certainly inundated our area with the situation with Les Miles and uh, LSU. And it, it's kind of to the point of no return now. I mean, you know, yeah. you're just waiting for the announcement. Won't be until after the Texas A&M game. And I know we, we filmed this early this week, but uh, you know, at this point, I think the decision has already been made. And, uh, you know, when you pull a coup off, so to speak, like with Joe Oliva and people, you know, involved with LSU, the money people, one, you got to do this behind the scenes mm -hmm. to get make sure everything is done financially to keep everything right. And secondly, you better have a coach ready for when you make that announcement that he's right around the corner and you make that move. Well, what it I mean, it's shocking to see what all transpired since the game against Ole Miss this weekend. Uh, prior to the game, you know, Les made a comment, I guess I'll make my announcement or I'll make my comment about my job security uh, when we get back. I'm like, wait a second, you haven't played the game yet, and you're already talking about that because it had leaked out prior to that. Then he gets back, and then Monday he says he's going to have an announcement. We're, okay, we're here. What's the big announcement? No announcement. And it's, it's, it, it, it's dragging on. And... My no coach sticks around like Joe Paterno has. It ain't happening guys anymore. Guys like that, you know, they're not sticking around much longer. And he's been around in 11 years. He's done some great things here. Uh, I don't like the way it's going about it. Uh, you you could have waited till the end of the year if you want to go in and fire the man and do, let him finish out against A&M. There was no finesse in this. Just, they should have just waited to the end. What's the difference if you fire him before the A&M game or you fire him after? It makes it easier to go and say, okay, we lose the A&M. Now you can go and say, okay, lost four games in a row. We'll fire you. Things aren't going well. Uh, but you better have, you better uh, have a coach in the waitings that you know that can take this job. I'm not talking about any coach. It ain't just throwing something on the wall, hope it sticks, and that's your coach. You better have a quality coach come into Baton Rouge. And none of this committee search and, and no. going through the motions, you better have somebody in waiting because of also other things that are happening across the college football landscape. You're talking about in Southern Cal and Virginia uh, Tech Miami and Miami of Florida all these other schools now also looking and you never know what happens I do think one thing is I'm interested to see what happens in Athens Georgia because I think with the we, we know eventually what will happen with less of what happens with Mark Ritten University of Georgia mm -hmm. because now that becomes an issue of man listen if LSU's doing it Shouldn't maybe we do the same thing? I mean, when you look at Mark and you look at Les, there are a lot of similarities in the programs, how it's been. Uh, now, Les has won a national championship and been to uh, a second uh, mm -hmm. national championship game. Rick hasn't done that. So, again, boy, is, is there a lot of pressure? And we live in a different world today than our dads and grandfathers, in which, you know, athletic directors years ago, they were former coaches. Now they're money people. Right. And so I think that's changed the equation now when you have people with money, with a little bit of power saying, you know what, I want to make a move. I'm willing to pay for it, get it done. I think that's what causes the friction between athletic directors and head coaches today. You know, a lot of these athletic directors, like you said, come in here with the business the side. The financial It's degrees. all about the business and how we do things business-wise. And it really affects the head coach who's coaching because, you know, also now the people out there listening, the money that the athletic department brings in, that's their money. They have to bring in all that money to supply for all the sporting events, uh, all their athletic department, that's their money, their TV money. That goes to them. It's not the school raising the money to do things of that nature for the athletic department. That's their money. So when you got an athletic director say, wait a second, I'm going to go out and raise all this money. It's for us. I'm going to pick and choose who I want. And then that's the thing about it. You're seeing more athletic directors now coming in and taking over universities, and they want to bring in their coach. Their boy, their so to so speak. We shall see, but I think Monday, Sunday, Monday, uh, I think Les will be gone. Uh, it's got to come down to you better have somebody come in here that's going to be an offensive-minded coach because 
you always say it, you know, hey, defense wins championship. But the way this team has played over the years, I haven't seen an offense. I've seen defense, just haven't seen an offense. One thing about defense is you better have a really good quarterback to run your offense. Right. And that's why a guy like Jimbo Fisher is on top of that list. He's 1A, 1B, 1C on the <laughs> LSU's list. We're going to show some of the highlights of the LSU Ole Miss game, mostly uh, Ole Miss highlights. But, uh, man, uh, John, I mean, you know, no imagination. This looked like the same sort of game planning we've seen from a while back. And, boy, we talked about him last week. Laquan Treadwell, man, you talk about a stud football player. He is that. And, you know, Ole Miss actually ran the football decently against LSU, a team not noted for running the football. And they looked like they had no clue that Chad Kelly could run the ball. We all talked about their offense from LSU. I'm going to tell you right now, the last three football games gave it up 30 points a game on all, on defensive side of football. I said this, and I've said this for many, many days. Their defense is small and slow and soft. Uh, linebacking core can't stop anyone. The secondary, Mike, has played poorly over this last three or four weeks. And But look at the size of this animal right here. This guy's yeah. a beast. You're talking about uh, a good-looking player, Laquan Treadwell. But, but, but I'm watching this football game, and I sat there and watched this. And look at this, Chad Kelly right here. And this was, you know, all night long he could have ran, and this is a big play. And, um, Unbelievable play, he scored a touchdown there. But LSU quit early in this ball game. When they got down, you know, 24 nothing, it's like, wow, you know, this is another week like they did against Arkansas. It's a great play right here. Dabbing this is England. a play right here. We thought that he would do it. We talked about penalty. it. We talked about the penalty, it. make him kick a long field goal. No, they push him back. He throws a touchdown. And we, talked, and we talked about a guy that could be a playmaker, Evan Ingram. Right. LSU, three turnovers in this game, 13 penalties. John, I mean, that, I mean that, that, that's almost unbelievable. Three-game losing streak since 1999. And then you see this on wow. November 7th, the 14th, and the 20th, how this team has just come apart. And it's the first time LSU has lost three consecutive wins by 10 points or more. You got to go back to man, Joe LaBruza, Don Schwab days. Uh, at, at LSU 1966. since 1966. And I think a big point, everybody points toward Alabama as why, you know, Les is in the difficulties he's in. But he's always talked about big boy football, big boy football against Ole Miss, Arkansas, Alabama, the last three years, two wins, seven losses, the last 17 games in the SEC, eight wins, nine losses. Well, John, you, I mean, you, you can understand why you know, kind of the rubber meets the road here. I think if they would have played these games with some better offensive, I, I don't know, maybe scoring some points and losing the games that way, they could sit there and say, well, you know, we got an offense, we can do things. But they haven't done anything with Harris at quarterback. And it's embarrassing to watch this offense perform. It's just, it's the same old lackluster plays you've seen three years ago, four years ago. It's the same old, same old. It's like they just dust it off the book and say, here's the same playbook we're going to use. Mike, it's embarrassing to watch his offense with the players they have. We thought they had the best offensive line in the SEC. Yeah, they're getting I can't whacked. say that about them the last three weeks. You know, what was funny, I think, when they got toward the end, they were in the red zone, the final two plays of that drive in which you saw Ole Miss adjust, I mean, so quickly that they were going to run it right. You saw Leonard Fournette take a peek up a little bit because he saw the adjustment. He ends up fumbling the football, and then on the final play, after a timeout, the quarterback and running back totally confused on what the play was. You know, that's coaching. Let's be honest. It's got to be coaching. Uh, they don't believe in the quarterback. And that's what I, if you don't believe in your quarterback and you don't believe that he can lead this club or do things or make changes and adjustments, then, then it's coaching problem. Then you don't have the quarterback. you got to get the right quarterback. And I think the smartest thing to do is come Sunday, clean house. We'll be back with more of the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Forge.